Dr. Shah Islam is a senior consultant at the clinical digital consultancy Hardy and Health. He joins us now live from London. Thanks so much for speaking to us. I mean, this must be exactly the kind of story uh, that you love to see. Are these the kinds of diagnostic tools, you know, the future that really are the future of healthcare in developing countries? Uh, firstly, thanks for having me. And it's a really great story. Um, I think what the team over at uh, Butterfly Inc. have done is truly remarkable in terms of actually uh, getting accessible healthcare to the emerging markets. Very often we compare uh, these uh, disruptive technologies with what we already have in developed um, health economies such as the UK and the US. But we've got to remember in the emerging markets and developing countries you just don't get the accessibility to things like ultrasounds and x-rays which we take for granted in the West and you know as we heard previously it is a major cause of infant death in Africa and hopefully with right uh, training you can essentially turn any smartphone with the butterfly probe into a fully functioning ultrasound device that can help save lives and pneumonia is really just the tip of the iceberg it's a really cost-effective way of screening patients who are unwell and and getting them the right uh, treatment that they require. Right. You almost get the feeling that because of such, you know, mobile digital technology in healthcare, uh, developing countries can actually skip that entire almost generation of development of healthcare infrastructure, the extremely costly infrastructure, including, you know, massive hospitals that would have the big item tools, like an ultrasound machine. If we can manage this, harness this with smaller pieces of technology, mobile technology, those large kinds of hospitals that are cost prohibitive won't even be necessary in the future. Well, I think in this particular case, that's exactly um, what's going on. Um, I think the, you know, the uniqueness of this tool is that you know, we know that everyone has a smartphone, so essentially with the probe, anyone's phone could turn into an, a functioning ultrasound machine. So yeah, you're completely right in terms of actually just skipping generations of building healthcare infrastructure. Um, and, you know, I've got no doubt in my mind that if successfully implemented, this will lead to saving patient lives. Uh, you know, I maybe should have given you a minute to think about this in advance, but I'll ask you anyway, what are some of the other really exciting developments uh, you've seen similar to this, these new technologies that really give you hope uh, for providing health care to the least privileged people? Well, I think imaging as a whole, because the images now exist on digital formats, um, they can be acquired remotely and then sent out for um, analysis by radiologists or other specialties um, who aren't actually within um, that particular country. Uh, we've seen it with teleradiology um, and then other markets would include things like um, dermatology where you could get um, a picture of a mole taken and that could be read elsewhere and it could triage you for your risk of cancer. So dermatology is a big one. Um, but also the, what I think we've seen a big trend in in the future is what we'll see is called digital therapeutics. So we could actually prescribe digital uh, solutions to healthcare instead of someone actually having to physically see a doctor or a practitioner. Um, there's lots of app-based treatments which could be prescribed by clinicians. Great stuff. Dr. Shah Islam joining us there from London. Thank you so much for that.